So the Felida's new release, a 2021 updated version of their Railmaster Homage. Now this Homage is getting closer to what the Amiga actually looks like because they did a sandblasted version before and that I did a review on of course as well, but I think it didn't quite give it the look that we were looking for because the Corgi Railmaster Homage is very popular, very successful. I've got one of those as well and we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison because the 2021 update Felida has got an all brush case finish but it has some significant upgrades, if you will, over the Corju. And that's what we're gonna cover in today's video because there's about 20 pounds difference in price between the two um, with my one, because my one has got the Seagull movement. But if you pay the extra 10 pounds more for the Myota movement, there's only 10 pounds difference right now if you bought them today between the Corju and the Felida. So I think that's enough of a, of a, a gap to make them be compared equally. So, Let's get stuck into this review and you'll get to see which is the overall winner and why. And I've already given one of these watches away. So the stats and the specs, well here they are side by side, Felida on the left, Corgi on the right. We're gonna pop up the text either side of these watches so you can just do a, a quick side-by-side -side comparison because although they look extremely similar there's some subtle differences so i'll start with the measurements and the weights etc so the watch on the left the felida with i took two links out for it to fit me on my seven inch wrist and it went from 157 down to 150 grams and the corgi went from 156 down to 145 i had to take three links out of that one so slight difference there the dimensions are very similar but the biggest difference as you can see here from the stats on the screen is thicknesses. Corgi is only 11.6 thick, including the crystal, everything. But the Felida is actually a chunky monkey. It's 14 mil thick because it has domed sapphire. That's the main difference. So the case sizes are exactly the same, 41 mil. Crowns are within two, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a mil difference. So over six and a half mil crowns. The lug to lugs again, nearest damn it, 48 mil. Again, even the taper on the bracelet goes from 20 down to 18 at the butterfly clasp. Uh, but the main difference is when it comes to little details here and there is the Corju only has 50 meters water resistance, whereas the Felida is stated to have 100 meters. That's a step up. The bracelet adjustment and resizing on the Corju, that's push pins, whereas on the Felida, it's screw pins. So a little upgrade there on the Felida. Both of them have all solid links. Female end links, again, both solid. Uh, all brush finish, all round. Both have exhibition case backs with the case backs uh, glass being mineral, not sapphire, but the top glass on the top of the watches is sapphire. Verify both of those. They both have loom. They both have automatic movements. It's, it's so close. But the devil is in the detail with these, which I'm gonna go on uh, a little bit more detail after this section. But as you can see, just from me showing you, discussing their stats and the specs, they're very similar. But it's all about the details with these watches, is what you are gonna either appreciate or not appreciate when it comes to making a decision and choosing one of these two, and which could ultimately objectively be the best. But subjectively, one can win just purely because you like the dial more, or you prefer just those little tiny details with how the lugs are slightly different between them. That's just an example. But spec-wise, you are getting a few upgrades with the Felida. As I said, dome sapphire, screw pins, and the movement is the key one here. And that's what we're gonna move on to next because the movement in the Felida is the NH35 and the movement in that I went for in my Corju is the DG2813. And that's a Chinese movement, a Seagull movement, an homage to the Myota movements. And that's why it costs a bit less. So if you went for the Myota option with the Corju, it get, like I said earlier, it's only 10 pounds difference in price. 87.60 all in for this one, including taxes and delivery. This one currently with the Seagull movement, 67 pounds 15. So they're very similar, but we've got to go into a bit more detail. So I'm going to move on to next, the movements. How well is the Seiko uh, movement running in this one? And how well is the Seagull movement running in this one? Then we'll show the loom. There's a side-by-side -side versus comparison outdoor shots, all that, and then we'll finish with my final conclusion and thoughts, and we get to see some macro and close-ups to show you literally the differences between the two and how they compare. And then that'll help you give an overall opinion on have Felida done it. Have Felida, although a little bit more expensive, knocked Corgio off their perch of being 
the best Railmaster homage creators. So let's move on to the next part of the video. So the DG2813 movement in the Corju is not great, unfortunately. Uh, a number of reasons why. First of all, straight out of the box, this is running on average plus 25. I've had plus 25, plus 29, plus 24, four different static tests, but obviously it's going to be slightly different if you wear this out and about. I've select the, select the uh, correct parameters on here. The beta is okay. The amplitude is actually okay. So this could be regulated. That is something that could easily be tweaked if you wanted to slow it down a bit, but I'm just comparing it as a standard piece. It's running a bit fast. Uh, the hand winding is very coarse, very noisy. The rotor is noisy and wobbly as well. So it's definitely not refined um, as movements go. So that's that's how the Corju movement compares. So let's move on to the next timepiece. So the Felida here with the NH35 Malaysian made Seiko movement with hacking and hand winding 21,600 beats per hour, 42 hour power reserve, things like that. It's well renowned for being a reliable, good solid performer. And this definitely fits in that bracket. I've tested this four different static positions. It's ranged from plus 11 to only plus three. And the amplitude generally overall is actually very healthy. It's, I know here it's showing 259, but in all the other settings I've had it at, the lowest was 273. So anything over 270 is actually a little bit more on the positive side for healthiness. Beat error is great. Uh, it generally was zero and it's only showed 0.1. Anything under 0 0.5 is deemed okay. Anything over that is a bit of a worry. So yeah. As we usually expect with the NH35, it's running great. Happy days. So thoughts and opinions on, first of all, I'm going to start with the Felida, why I think this has beaten the Corju. Um, first of all, the brushing is that little bit better overall, all over. The general fit and finish is better. The Corju is not bad by any means, but there's, there's almost nothing wrong with this Felida. I can't find any actual major issues. The only issue I would notice is this unusual gap you get here, but that this doesn't actually detract from the comfort of the watch. And it sits a bit square on the wrist here, sort of flat. It's hard to show you without breaking my wrist off, but <laughs> it's quite flat across here. It doesn't conform because of the butterfly, but it fits extremely comfortably. They both do. The, the sizing of these you can get spot on, specifically for me, of course. But because of the colorway you get on this, the black dial, I, I went for it. It's very much a strap monster. Now, James over at Honest Watch Reviews has won this watch in my giveaway. Congratulations again. And um, I'm sending it to him with three of my straps from my business, Off The Cuff Watch Straps Limited. And uh, hopefully he'll get to show the watch on those straps to show you that either of these watches are strap monsters. You can just make them so much uh, a versatile piece in your collection because you can really swap them out. Because this has good water resistance. I took my Corju swimming um, and it was fine. Screw down crown with seals and gaskets, same on the back. There's no issues there. So I would say you don't have to worry about water resistance. Even though this is 50 meters, it's actually great. It's fine. I've had no troubles with it. But this one, just peace of mind knowing it says 100 meters. Uh, one big plus as well with the tactile aspect of this watch is first of all, how easy it is to undo and uh, take out the links in this watch. It was so easy and smooth that the fit and finish, the build quality of these links is sensational. It really is good. It's a significant upgrade on what you'd normally get at this price, definitely. So that was easy to do, and that's really nice to know. And then the unscrewing of this crown is perfect. It's so smooth, no grittiness, really easy. And it's really nice, easy pop for each part of the crown adjustment. So you know that this crown and stem have been cut and adjusted correctly. The issue I've had, which has been a thing on a few of these cores, apparently, is well, first of all, this crown 
a slightly different design. Doesn't unscrew and operate as easily as this one, but this Corju had very gritty threading in here. Let's get some focus. It's okay now. It's okay now, but I had to put some silicone grease on there and run this in and out of a good few times for it to feel like it was biting. It's just not very smooth machining. It's okay now, it's still a little bit gritty and a bit stiff occasionally, but um, again, that was just something. And this definitely is not a refined movement. Uh, not only that, it's the wind, sorry, I'll unscrew that again. The hand winding is noisy. It's okay, it just feels a bit cheap and tinny as you're, as you're winding it. And it feels coarse. And this movement isn't running very well. It's running really way too fast. There's a very slight beat error, but again, I know it's kind of expected at this price point. You get a, an unregulated entry level movement just thrown in there. But often you do get them running well. I mean, this Valida, as you saw from my movement check, is running really well. It's well within tolerances. And I just do like an NH35 in comparison because they, they are reliable. I've never had one with problems. And it's kind of a, a very low maintenance piece. It's not fragile either. You can hand wind it without fear of anything seizing or breaking like I've had recently in a PT5000 movement. This just has a lovely smooth and light hand winding action and everything operates smoothly. Like when you pop the crown out and you adjust the time, it's not jumpy or weird. The second hand doesn't leap all over the place like it can do on a cheap movement. So these are the gain of the little differences you notice. It's worth paying a little bit more for just subtle but pleasant little upgrades. The loom on this is acceptable, but it surprisingly was beaten by the Corju. So even though we thought we we're going to be getting a significant upgrade with loom, or I did with the Felida, it's, it's still only average. Uh, it's the hands is the main one. It's nice that they've gone to the effort of put it on the uh, 12, 3, 6 and 9 marker points. It's just weird that the hands fade so badly because ultimately the main thing you want to last the longest is the hands. because That's the bit that tells the blooming time, isn't it? Corju just pipped it to that. So that's why it's, it's tip for tap, really. This is a more elegant, slimmer design. I do prefer a slimmer profile. 11 and a half is a really nice, slim... Oh, bash the camera, I'm good at that. Um, it's nice, it, it really conforms to the wrist better, and it's that little bit lighter, as I said, and the flat crystal helps give it that less bulky feel. And I do prefer the deep graining texture on this dial, whereas it's very subtle on the Felida. It's almost imperceptible. Just, it's really hard to pick out. See my camera struggling. No, I can just about say it's ultra, ultra subtle graining on there. As you can see on here, boom, plays with the light. Awesome. Do like that. And I went for sterile because I just don't like the name for leader. Nothing personal. It's just, just can't stand it. It's just hard to explain to people that you've got a STD on your, on your wrist. <laughs> Sorry. Um, cause you, whereas that, that's just, just sounds a bit more classy in my opinion. And, um, Again, a bit of text on there balances the dial out a bit. It helps bring it in a little bit. Uh, but, you know, I think that they're, they're so close yet so different at the same time. Look at these lugs. Look how much slimmer the lugs are on the Corju compared to the quite chunky lugs you get on the Felida. And then obviously you see here that thickness. Significantly thicker Felida, not as thick on the Corju. So it's almost going to get down to personal taste now. It really is. Do you prefer a slightly thicker watch? Do you do you prefer these little tactile aspects which are a bit better, such as the crown action and the and and the refinements, if you will, the brushing, etc. Is on both is really good. They are really close, but only just, only just does Felida pip it for me because I do appreciate the refinements for just a little bit more money. It's nice to know you're getting a product as well that has showing evolution. Whereas Corju, I would like them to maybe step our game up, maybe go, right, we've got things almost there with this Corju. Let's step it up a bit. Let's do a hundred dollar, hundred pound version with the refinements. Change the movement, get it to an NH35 maybe, keep the slimness, make sure there's no quality control issues like snotty crowns and things like that. And maybe upgrade the bracelet to have screw pins and upgrade the loom significantly especially on the hands. That's a priority. And then Corju would win again. The Felida is the winner. And well done, James, over at Honest Watch Reviews for fairly and squarely entering the competition and entirely randomly was the winner. And this is your new watch. Wear it well, my friend, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.